This is Algebra 2, Chapter 12, Section 3, in which we will study trig functions of general angles. We've worked with the trig functions in right triangles a little bit there with uh, the opposite over hypotenuse and those kinds of things back in 12.1. Now we're going to work with it when they're just angles floating about for a little bit. And the nice thing is if we know coordinates that are on the terminal side, if they tell me a point, then I can use that information to find the values of the six trig functions. All I need to know is that point, some point that's on that side, and everything else follows right from there. Now we do need to find one value that they won't give us. We need to figure out a value for r to use these formulas here. r represents the radius, the distance out from the origin. And there's a nice formula that comes from the Pythagorean theorem for how to calculate r. And we'll do that over on the next page here. We'll, find, we'll do one where we find r. But we have six formulas, one for each trig function, that relates to the x and the y and the r. Now, notice here, if anywhere along the way you have zero for a denominator, then that makes that function undefined. If they told me the point was 2, 0, okay, then y is 0, so cosecant would be undefined because you can't put zero in the bottom. Cotangent would also be undefined because you can't put zero in the bottom. If there's not a zero in the point, then you're not going to have to worry about that. So let's say they gave us the terminal side of an angle and told me that it contains the point negative 6, 4. And they want us to figure out the six different ratios using that point. First job we have is to figure out the value for r so that we can just plug everything in. So I brought our formula for r from the previous page. Substitute the point into it, the x and the y. When I do negative 6 squared, that gives me 36. 4 squared is 16. 36 plus 16 is 54, uh, 52, sorry. If you did this and you got a negative 36 when you did that step, then you need to remember parentheses. I put them on here just to emphasize that they should be there. And the square root of 52, if you're a decimal fan, is 7.211, roughly. So now I know values for x, y, and r, I can use the six formulas from the previous page that you have in front of you on your note sheet, and we can get the six values that we need. Sine of theta is y over r, and then if I divide that out, I get 0.555 as a decimal. Cosine is x over r, and I can divide that and get a decimal. Tangent is y over x. Divide that for a decimal. Cosecant is r over y. Secant is r over x. And cotangent is x over y. Okay. And I let my calculator do most of the heavy lifting for me. So those problems aren't too bad. It's just a matter of finding your value for r and then working with it. Now the other big thing they're going to throw at us is they're going to ask us to find reference angles. Okay. They're going to ask us to find a reference angle. And what they're talking about is the acute angle that's formed between the terminal side and the x-axis, wherever that terminal side is and the x-axis, we're looking for the acute angle that's there. So it's going to be between 0 and 90 for the, term, for the reference angle. And we've got a handy little chart 
that will help us find reference angles. If they give you degrees, you're going to look at the degrees information. If they give you radians, you're going to look at the radians information. And then use the correct column to determine which one or which formula to use to find your reference angle. Now you're going to have this chart handy in front of you when we go to this next page. So you'll be able to see it as I'm talking about it here. They want us to find the value, the reference angle, for a 210 degree angle. All right. Since it's degrees, I'm going to look in the degrees column. 210 is between 180 and 270, so that puts me in the quadrant 3 row. 210 is in quadrant 3. Well, the formula says do the angle minus 180, 210 minus 180, leaves me a reference angle of 30 degrees. That's all there is to that. Okay. Now, suppose they gave us a negative 190. That's not on our chart anywhere. That's okay. We learned last time how to get coterminal angles was to add 360 to it. So if I add 360, that gives me 170. 170 is between 90 and 180, so I'm in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, the formula says 180 minus theta. 180 minus 170 is 10 degrees. Let's do a couple in radians. These take a little bit of thinking to work with. Okay. The, the degree ones are more straightforward. The radian ones, because there's fractions involved, tend to uh, alarm people. But we can work around it. So we have negative 5 pi over 4. Now I'm going to ignore the pi for a minute. I'll come back to the pi later, but I'm just going to work with the fraction part, the negative 5 fourths. All right, that is not in my chart. Well, we can do similar to what we did up here. We added 360 in radians, that would be adding 2 pi. Well, negative 5 fourths plus 2, my trusty calculator tells me is 3 fourths, so I have 3 fourths of a pi. Well, three-fourths is in between half a pi and a whole pi. Half a pi to a whole pi is quadrant two. Okay. Well, in quadrant two, it says to do pi minus the angle. One whole pi minus three-fourths of a pi leaves one-fourth of a pi to be a reference angle. Okay. One more here with those. We have 5 pi over 3. Again, I'm going to ignore the pi. I've got 5 thirds. Well, 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds. 1 and 2 thirds is more than 1 and a half, not quite up to 2. That puts me in quadrant 4. The formula in quadrant 4 says 2 pi minus the angle. Well, if I've got two pies minus one and two-thirds pies, that leaves a third of a pi. So pi over three is our reference angle. All right. Like I said, the radians take a little bit more work to get used to because you have to work with fractions, and I know that scares some of you, but you'll be able to do it. You just have to think about what's going on. Your calculator will do the heavy lifting for you in the fraction part. And then you just have to figure out which one of the quadrants you happen to be sitting in. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.